In our state, you know, in order to exceed growth, you have to be 2.0. Our growth was 9.57 in one year, in 10 months following a pandemic. Our school letter grade went from a 71 prior to the pandemic to an 83. We are just measures away from being an A school. In K2, we've always had a type of curriculum that supported the phonemic awareness, but it did not support the phonics continuum of the science of reading. So we had to let our teachers know that everything that our students needed was not found in this one curriculum. With 3-5, they were mainly focused on vocabulary, but they knew that their students were lacking fluency. They knew that their students were lacking decoding. So as we were going through letters training, the teachers realized that they had to do a shift in teaching. And so school-wide last year, we started doing core phonics survey. It was beautiful because our third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers bought into it. They're like, oh, that's why we can't attack this passage because we don't, we don't have this. So this year, our district decided to buy 95% um, group, which was a phonics curriculum that we're using school-wide. In addition to 95% group, I bought two additional pieces for my third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers. I bought multisyllabic curriculum and I bought the vocabulary surge. So now our teachers, um, every single day, within that 120 minutes to 150 minutes ELA block, they're teaching 20 to 30 minutes of explicit core phonics or phonemic awareness or vocabulary instruction. And we monitor that data piece every nine weeks because what we're doing is we set measurable outcomes. You know, at the end of this six to eight week period, we want 80% of our students to be able to have these skill, phonics and phonemic awareness and vocabulary skills. Those students that do not get it, they get an additional dip of that core phonics or phonemic awareness with the tutor. So we're doing science or reading K-5. You're gonna see word walls. You're gonna see sound walls, you know. And this year we've been very deliberate with our extended passages. Our third graders are hitting 300 words or more and we're giving our teachers the scaffolding and previewing strategies to, to just eliminate the frustration. And our fourth and fifth grade, 500 words or more. And we have a rubric for September through May of what type of text our students will be reading, how many words per minute they will be reading, how many questions of accuracy they should get. So that's our challenge this year, to get our reading to move at the same rate as our math and science. All right, I want you to read that paragraph, including that first sentence silently. This curriculum is 25 weeks, but we go to school for 36 weeks. So you do not have to go page by page, day by day. You follow your students. When 80% get it, then it's time to move. If they're not getting it, it then comes to the core small group teacher table. And even with third, fourth, and fifth grade doing the multisyllabic activities and doing the vocabulary surge, it leads to vertical PLC conversations. Where do we need our third graders that are going to fourth grade? Where do we need to start next year? Our fourth graders that are going to fifth grade, where do we need to start? So the science of reading is actually, it's a welcome experience here at Lucoma Elementary School. I had mine do. Uh, a quick stop and jot, and we did this whole group yes. because we have yeah. not covered poetry. Our MCLs are like our train to trainers. So as we're rolling out this new curriculum and we're rolling out what it will look like in whole group instruction, what it will look like in small group instruction, and then what it looks like in tier two and tier three, our MCLs are going to these district-wide professional development. So they are our trained trainers. So they're getting the science and they are our building level support for the rollout and the implementation and overseeing that. And they're also in the letters trainings with our teachers and they're in our PLCs. They're having the conversations about the bridging the gap activities that teachers have to do. And they're having the conversations to make sure that our teachers are pacing themselves along the way. I am an MCL for ELA, so um, science of reading is new. And we started it last year with letters. So we are um, like Wilson County's ambassadors for letters. Last year we did a lot with making sure that the teachers were on track with their training and that they were turning in the evidence they needed to show for um, each unit. 
um, making sure that the teachers understood, you know, what each unit entailed and how they could use it in their classroom. And then this year, it's more of that application, being able to use it. So I've been leading the planning with those um, lessons in the fourth and fifth grade classrooms, which looks, looks a lot different than K-3. As you know, phonics probably wasn't a huge part of four or five. It was a lot of vocab is what we did. Um, so it's been kind of a shift and it's planning a lot of lessons revolved around 95%. We are working as a team and planning and coming back with data with how our students are doing. And that was one of the data pieces, you know. Um, they're learning these syllables. They can tell you this is a closed syllable. They can tell you how to pronounce it. But then when they go to write the word, they're still not, you know, writing the words correctly or they're still not being able to read these words. So it's, okay, we need more application. So what can we do to get that? So it's a work in progress and we're just working with the data we're getting from the students and trying to change it that way. We came in over the summer over three days and we um, they really broke down the science of reading for us. I do the 95% group with my intervention groups um, which is really great because it's guided kind of for us um, because it's for like the smaller ages I have to adjust it for the bigger ages and there's some things I can move or tweak to make it fit for my kids. I think the most exciting part is to see my third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers seeing that they're just not going to take a reading standard to a problem-solving meeting. We're actually looking at real problems. There, there's a decoding problem. There's a fluency problem. There's a comprehension problem. So um, I just think science of reading has come alive. We have been pulling out groups of students that we identified at the very beginning of the year as targeted students. And we went ahead and used the 95% intervention. Um, and these students grew leaps and bounds. I was pulling them, Miss um, Mosley was pulling them, and then we had a couple other people pulling, and we just saw lots of growth. Good. What is this about, y'all? I have seen a really big impact just the beginning of this year as far as we were able to pull smaller interventions in the beginning. I had four different groups and like just a comprehension group. We knew that just from the get-go, these kids coming out needed some comprehension they were able to place out of that group and to move forward. So therefore, I can focus on going to the next step with them. Um, I've seen a change in the school just of a lot of the kids, they want more, they want to do more because they see that we want more for them.